I'm Jason White. And we're the Samples. And we just jumped off the porch with BGB. Ah. Alright. Alright. Today we got the Sunday service jumping off the porch with us today. Come on now. How y'all feeling today? Feeling good. Amazing. Great, 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 great day, great day, great day to be alive in the eight. I know that's right. Come on. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have y'all on the porch with yeah, us today. Absolutely. So what's some of the things you've been getting into in the city of Atlanta? <sighs> well, Atlanta's just great, man. I mean, you know, just the just the staples of it. You know what I mean? The the cities, uh, the, the, the freeways, of course, you know, the 85, the, the 75. I'm still learning my loops, man, my freeways. So you got what? You got, you got the 85, you got the 75, you got the 285, am I right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I'm learning all of that. But it's just beautiful. The trees, you know, everywhere. And then, of course, the people, man, the, the languages uh, and just the love that's, you know, that's just in the air. Uh, being here. Uh, working at the venue and just the, you know what I mean? I'm from the West Coast, I'm from Los Angeles, and so the, the hospitality, the accents, you know what I mean, the love, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing. That's real. Yeah. So talk about that Easter Sunday service that you guys got Ooh, coming up. Ooh, what you want to know, what you want to know. <laughs> well, it's called The Flip. Uh, the Flip is a place where we're able to flip songs, and when I say flip songs, change them around. Uh, maybe the change the, the, the lyrics, change the intent, um, you know, what we want to do. A lot of times we, we will change secular songs into inspirational songs, uh, things that glorify God. Uh, but we've been doing it as the Sunday Service Collective. Uh, but I wanted to, to take it a little deeper uh, and, and do it with the genres. And so first I was saying, you know, um, you know, let's do a 60s genre, let's do a 70s genre, let's do a Motown genre. Uh, and then somebody was like, yo, well, we're going to Atlanta, why don't we do our first one, our first, you know, like month or so as the Dirty South. And so, uh, you know what I mean? Of course, when you think of Atlanta and you think of the Dirty South, Luda, Monica, Skate, you know, just the list just goes on, T.I. And so we've got some really, really, really planned that's going to be just out of this gate, out of the world, I should say, uh, for, for Easter Sunday. So you don't want to miss it. It's going to be really, really inspirational. A lot of surprises. So where did the inspiration come from to flip secular music into inspirational music? Well, we were already doing it. You know what I mean? We started doing it with Sunday Service, the Sunday Service Collective. Uh, and as I said, you know, there's just always been a love for music, you know, that I have all music uh, and secular music uh, in my house. You know, I grew up in a church house, but we loved, you know, we loved, you know, R&B music. We loved, you know, and my mom and our family was always open to it. And so came up with the idea uh, and as we were going forth with Sunday service, just basically started saying, well, how can we make this um, a general to all people, not necessarily just gospel um, um, parishioners and not just a church. You know, how could we make this a world mission? How could we invite? How could we, you know, share the love with everybody and bring everybody into the love of Christ? And so in doing that, we took a bit of this and just kind of made it inspirational, whether it was Rain, SWV, whether it was, you know, I Will Die For You from Prince, you know what I mean, whether it was Fade, you know, from the Chicago hitters, it didn't matter. And we would just, you know, bring it into, you know, inspiration. How did you guys gain the attention of Kanye West? Ah, uh, well, I'm a, I'm a vocal contractor for television. Uh, I've vocal contracted many different shows, American Idol, X Factor, the Grammys, the Oscars, Big Shots with Steve Harvey. And so if you wanted something that was done vocally, you know what I mean? Of course, you needed to stack vocals and different things like that. And you would get wonderful singers like these behind me. And so uh, I got a call from a, a friend of mine, you know, Phil Carnish, which is uh, one of ATL's great musicians uh, at the time. And he said, you know, Ye is looking for a choir. And I was like, yay, who's yay? 
and you know he was like Kanye and so he said he needs you know a hundred singers by Friday and it was like Wednesday and so Ye wants everything yesterday uh, and so uh, me and you know a bit of our team we sat at a table and started just kind of like calling people uh, and getting them you know to the table and see how we could get them there and so just really kind of like started uh, from there and so that was the catalyst you know of of, of Sunday service, getting the singers there. And once we got there, we met with him, we could find out what it is that he wanted to do. And it was really yay that said, you know, I don't really want to do secular music. I don't really want to, you know, use profanity. I don't really want to do that. I want to go this way with my music. And he was like, is there arrangers here? Are there writers here? And so out of our crew, we just started kind of like flipping and rewriting the song. That was the inspiration behind it. That's real. Yeah. So what was the creative process like coming up with the project, The Flip? Um, well, The Flip is a little different. Like I said, The Flip is, I wanted The Flip to be about genres, like set genres. When we would do Sunday Service or the Sunday Service Collective, it would be a bit of maybe some Tracy Chaplin or there would be some Gwen Stefani or there would be some Ye songs. It was a wide range. But with the flip, I wanted to um, garner it to a certain genre of music. So like I had the idea to do like a, maybe like an 80s month or a 90s month or a bad boy month or a JD month. And so I was like, you know, okay, that, that could work. And then I knew that I wanted to do it here in Atlanta. I knew I wanted to do it here. And so as I began to think of the heroes of the streets of Atlanta, Tip, Outcast, Monica, Luda, you know what I mean? Just the, 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 the grandfathers or the grandmothers, if I can say that, the, the pillars, I should say. You know, I was like, why don't we do like a month or two of just the Dirty South? And uh, that was just the, the birth of it. What was it like working on Jesus is King with Kanye? Oh man, just amazing, just amazing. For a while there, we didn't necessarily know that we were working on a new record. We were just doing Sunday service and he would be like, like, yo, call 15 singers together. I wanna put them on this song. And so one of the songs was called Garden. And so we just started, you know, singing to it. And we started replacing the samples with vocals. That's really kind of how it, it really started. And then we would move from a, this song to another song. And so there wasn't really a record, really. We were just working on music, working on ideas. That's really just kind of how Ye kind of works. And week after week, I would call the singers in and we would come up with things, stacking, replacing samples and different things like that. So we could drop the sample out. And then out of that, next thing you know, you know, songs just came to, to point and then he put the record basically together. And then we would hear closed on Sunday and you know what I mean it was like it was moving pieces from all different you know different points and then he's the mastermind and we just put it all together how did it make you feel to know that you won a Grammy off the album ah wonderful uh just wonderful um we we got some we used to really kind of like get a little flack and when I would say flack meaning that you know there were gospel artists that didn't necessarily feel that Kanye West was a gospel artist. And so, you know, that first year, man, we was kind of like taking Billboard Awards, we were taking Grammys, we were taking, you know, just awards, and they were labeling us as a gospel artist. Who's to say that we're not? You know what I mean? Who's to say that it wasn't? Uh, and so it felt well to be able to do, um, uh, it felt really great to be able to be a part of something like that. and. To me, I felt both. Now you've got some, some rap artists who, who have done gospel records and they sounded like gospel records. But Jesus is King was special to me because it still sounded like yay. The song still felt like yay. The cadences of the rap still felt like yay, but they were inspirational. You knew who he was talking about. You know what I mean? He wasn't uh, talking about gold diggers, he was talking about God. You know what I mean? But it still felt like a yay record. And so that's what was monumental to me. I had never heard anything really like that that pointed you to God, but it was still swaggy. It was still dope. The beats still hit hard. The kicks still hit hard. You know what I'm saying? 
Just don't. How did it lead to you guys working on your own album, Jesus is Born? Ah, ah. Y'all want to talk about that? <laughs> huh? I want to say something about that. No, Jesus is Born came out of Sunday services. Jesus is Born just came out of the Sunday services. And so Ye would have us to work on anywhere from 10 to 15 songs a week. We were flipping songs. We were flipping, you know, this. Or he would send, you know, he would send me, you know, maybe like this. Let's do a flip on Chasey Chapman. Let's do a flip on Gwen Stefani. Let's do, you know, a flip on. I think one of the one of the most outlandish was like, you know, a Shirley Murdoch flick. I was like, yo, yay, we can't flip that. But out of these songs would come, you know what I mean, these great things. And so uh, I think we recorded what about about how many? Thirty nine. Thirty nine. We recorded like thirty nine songs. It took a, like a one week to record like thirty nine songs, and in between that, we were still doing Sunday service as well. But we would get in the band, different ones, and uh, we would cut the record, and it was just it was just great. And so those songs are from the actual Sunday service. Has there ever been a song so left field? Like fan favorites that you guys just couldn't flip? Like, oh no, it's too many raunchy lyrics. Y'all have flipped some of the most raunchy songs. I remember, <laughs> how does it feel with anybody? Okay, Ooh, that's good. Uh, the genuine song. But that worked. That worked. But so, was, what it was it called? How does it feel was the genuine song. Yeah. Like, so anxious was the, so uh, anxious. Was the oh. genuine song. Yeah. Uh, so, Untitled, the um, How Does It Feel, D'Angelo, that was the only song that we rewrote to, wrote it, tried to teach it to the choir, and it just did most of the things they hit. Uh, but that was the only song that just, just didn't come together. Uh, I will say, I will add to that, that, you know, Ye wanted us to flip As We Lay by Shirley Murdoch. You know, that song is... Uh, about a you know adulterous relationship and i was like yo you know the song is hard you know by you know roger troutman produced it it's a dope song and i was like yo we cannot you know do a disservice to you know the late roger troutman there's no way we can flip that and um you know our writer you know nikisha greer she just she just smashed it and that song was just like a wonderful worship moment. You know, I remember the first time that we sung it. And so, um, and it touched, as it touched me, it touched, you know, the place that day. And so, I won't say, I think, as, to, to answer your question, How Does It Feel was the hardest song. But there were other songs that I didn't think that we could do that really fell on good ground. So what is exactly the creative process in flipping a song? Um, for us, it, 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 it varies. It usually starts with our writers. It starts with, with, with the writers, being able to um, rewrite, reroute the song, rewrite the song, if I could say that. Sometimes the songs wouldn't need it. You know, sometimes we would make it very gospel, lyrics, praise, and different things like that. And he was like, well, why don't we just keep it, you know, like it is. And so from there, the writer would give it to our creative team. Juan, myself, Phil Carnish, and we would get in and just really kind of, Phil Carnish is our, our, our musical director, and so we, I would always want things to sound like the record. You're going to use the same sounds, use the same kick patterns, use the same, you know what I mean, find that piano sound or that road sound or whatever to make it authentic to, you know, the song. And then we would teach it to the choir, and so now, you've got a, 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 a voicemail or a voice note of the, 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 the melody, but now we've got to turn it into singing. How can we do that? And so some lines would have harmony on it. Some lines would be where the girls would take the, the melody line while the tenors, altos, and sopranos be doing oohs over it. Now you've got to turn it into a moment that it could either go for a cappella or with music accompaniment. So it's a process. And the process is it starts with the writer, the writer rewriting it, and then, of course, giving it to us. And then we get into a room all together and we put it together to see how we could do it, how, you know, what would keep it different. 
Uh, and it could be sometimes that the men would take the melody. Sometimes it would be that the ladies would take the melody. Take what the was melody. it like performing Sunday service at Coachella? Ah, I'm going to let them handle that. Come on, y'all tell us about that. It was an amazing ride. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful, but amazing. Um, yeah. It was a long week. Like, it was a lot of hours. Um, we probably learned about 25 songs that week. Yeah. And um, we only sang two of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you work with a creative like a Kanye West, who has brilliant ideas every five minutes, Things change, so you kind of got to stay pliable and able to go with the flow. So there were a lot of changes that week. It was a lot happening. Yes. But, so when we got on the mountain, we really weren't sure what was going to happen. But God being God, you know, it was amazing. It was beautiful. It felt good. The people felt good. Yeah. And, you know, we, we did what needed to be done. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was Easter of 2019. It was Easter. It was Easter, too. It was Easter. Easter. It was Easter Sunday of 2019, Coachella. There had never been anything like that on, on the grounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you all remember or not, there was a hill. We were, st we were on this big mountain yeah. on and this hill. And they built specifically for that performance. They built that just for that performance. Um, and uh, he, he came up with the, with the whole thing, basically. And so there were Sunday performances that happened, yes. but that morning they made it like a sunrise service. Like in, in Christendom, you know, we believe that, um, that, that the sunrise was when Jesus rose from the grave, you know what I mean? So we call it a sunrise service. And so we had Sunday service on Easter. It was wonderful, eight different countries, simulcast, 50,000 people at Coachella. Which was also interesting because it was the day after 420, which most people at Coachella are partaking in all of their vices. <laughs> so to see these same people get up yeah. and make their way yeah. to this service that yeah. Sunday morning was really beautiful to it see. Was. They started camping out when we pulled up to get ready. Yeah, like they had already at four in the morning wow. they were already in line lined up and yeah. i'm like these people have been partying all day all night and they yeah. are here anticipating whatever is about to happen today it was really beautiful to see and that was our first time really being in front of a real audience yep. oh yeah 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 everything before that had been very intimate and exclusive and private so Absolutely. yeah that was our first time in front of an audience like that in person yay is a perfectionist and um, we did, as, they, as, as Peach and as Peaches and, and, and Juwan mentioned, you know, it was a lot of technical difficulties. That week of rehearsals was just wild. We did not have a game plan that week. <laughs> there wasn't, you know, a game plan. And so how you see us now, like in the circle, you see us gathering around, that didn't happen. That didn't even come together till the day before. So we had risers, like traditional risers, like we had been singing on for the longest. And the risers wasn't stable. They weren't sturdy, they were slippery. And I was like, Mr. West, there's no way that the choir can, 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 can stand on that. You know what I mean? It's just not good. He was like, well, why don't we take it up? And y'all just, you know, do like a big circle around. I was like, what do you mean? Well, how are they gonna see me? He was like, I'm gonna put you in the center and I'm gonna build something on top and you're gonna stand on top and you're gonna direct everybody that's standing in the round. And that is literally how it just happened. And you know, Ye is just, he's just a visionary. And there's been enough times that I've told him, no, nah, that ain't gonna work, no. Nah. You know, or I was skeptical about it. And uh, like everything, he loves proving people wrong. <laughs> he takes joy in proving you wrong. And so he definitely proved me wrong. Did you know that you guys were going to have special guest singers with you that, uh, at Sunday Service at Coachella? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, who did we have? We had Ty Dollar. We had Chance the Rapper. Yeah, Tiana Taylor. Tiana Taylor. Yeah, Tiana Taylor. Uh, wow, of course, the late DMX. 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 DMX did the prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I right? And that was his second time praying with us. That's right. That's right. He came to a Sunday service and, and prayed. And man, the ex. I didn't know all of that was inside of him, man. I didn't know that all of that, that power and, you know, that preacher and all of that and that, that knowledge. And so it was just wonderful. Ye was going through some, some things. He was, that was the time when he was really going through his spiritual rebirth. 
And so I don't know if you all remember that that clip when he just really just kind of like broke in the spirit and and Kit Cuddy and, and DMX and all those people really kind of like got around him and really was praying for him. Uh, that was the rebirth of him coming into the knowledge of, of God. So it's just wonderful, man. That's amazing. Coachella was out of this world. Man. How about the Free Larry Hoover campaign? Uh, it's a great concert. It's a great concert. The concert was good. You know, Drake and Ye, it was great seeing them. Um, that was the first time the Drake Ye concert was the first time that we heard Ye rap, yeah. rap, rap his, his R&B stuff again. Yes. His hip hop. Did I say R&B? I'm so yeah. sorry. His hip hop music. <laughs> so that was a joy for us. Seeing Ye do Stronger. Hearing Ye do Go Digger. Seeing Ye do, he did everything, he did everything you know, everything. that day. You know what I mean? It was just wonderful. So being in a collab with us, and then of course we opened, you know, the concert up. Uh, it was just great, man. It was just great. But um, you know, of course we knew who we know we know who Larry Hoover, you know, is. It was just a great. It was just a great night. Packed seventy-five thousand people in that Los Angeles, you know, Memorial Coliseum. Just, just great. I remember that place as a little kid. I grew up like down the street uh, from it, and so to be able to perform in that building, uh, just just amazing. And to be with family, just good. That's real. After being around Kanye West for a period of time and absorbing the knowledge that you now have, how do you plan to use and execute that knowledge on road, on tour of the flip? Well, many things. I, I wanna, if I can, I wanna throw that to them. Uh, basically, what are some great things that we've learned from Ye? Uh, what fearlessness. is fearlessness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, fearlessness. But in what way? In every way. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. How you? No matter how crazy it, it looks or people. He's taught us all how to trust your vision, yeah. even when nobody else understands it yeah. and nobody else gets it. Because there have been many times visions were presented. I was like, "Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way it's gonna work. Ain't no way. And it will work. It will. And it will be fantastic. Yeah. It's just like God dog. Yeah. So it's just if nothing else. It would be starts, like what? God dog. God dog. <laughs> It'll be like, God, it's, no. it's fearlessness because he's the most, everything he said he wanted to do, he's done it yeah. 10 times over. When he was X amount of dollars, millions of dollars in debt, yeah. and he was still saying that he was going to be a billionaire, and yeah. he did it. He did everything, he's, he's, he's fearless, and it has worked for him, and I've, I've taken that away from this environment personally. You said the same thing. Yeah. What do you think, Josh? Also, I think that... Um, I think you, know, you say he was a perfectionist. I think we're more so the perfectionist, and he doesn't mind um, working at something if he if he sees how big it can be. Like it can start from the bottom. It could be you know a little rocky before at, at first, but yeah. keep pushing and being persistent and, until you get it to where you want it to be. What you think? Absolutely, same thing. Keep striving, even if the media attacks. Know that you know. That won't last long. They'll laugh now, but they'll be copying later. That's right. That's right. So keep pushing through. Keep following your dreams. He was a big believer, and that was, he still is, a big believer in God. Uh, um, faith. Faith. Yeah, a lot of belief. Faith. He had a lot of faith. And so, um, you know, he, he looked to God. You know, I, I, I know... You know, you know, our founder could definitely be, you know, complicated and, and different things like that, and a little bit of here, a little bit of there. But he is, um, Kanye is a man of God. He really is. He's a man of faith. He's a man of, of belief. And like anything, man, we could all, we all go our way sometimes. We all go astray. We all, you know what I mean. We're all saved by grace. You know what I mean? It's, it's by grace, through faith, that we're, that we're saved. You know what I mean? We're in Christ. And so, but, you know, without that, we can all be, you know, at, at any point. We all have some, some, some good days. We have some, some days, man, where we fall short. And, um, but at the core of us, you know what I mean? At the center, my man, of who we are, you know what I mean? We're good. We're not wicked. You know what I mean? We're none of those things. And, yay. I, I knew, I've, I've gotten a lot of questions about, about Mr. West and about, yeah, and I know him to be that. I know him to be, have a good heart. I know him to be pure. 
I know for his motives to be for God. When you spend millions and millions and millions of dollars not on jewelry, not on another Lambo, to take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, we didn't travel on United. We didn't travel on Delta. We didn't travel on American Airlines. We didn't travel on none of those things. When we were going to do ministry, it was a 767 that was private that he would put up this amount of money to do that. So uh, when, when, when you're investing and investing of your resources to do God's work, it's serious. So I, I love him for that. I love him for being true to the call and the, 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 the advancing of Christ. That's real. What can the fans expect from you guys on road of the flip? Uh, well, you can expect. How about how about you just show us? How about that? Ah, I like that. I like that. Come on, let's let's. let's, let's put a little bit. Come on, what we gonna do? <clears throat> One, two, ready. Fall down, fall down, Lord, please. Let it, let it. the vamp it would go like this rain rain lord please rain rain lord please rain come on jay rain lord please rain rain lord please rain lord please we need it we need it rain lord please rain lord rain lord please we need it we need it we need rain lord please rain Lord, rain, Lord, please. We did it, we need it, we need it, we rain, Lord, please. I can't wait to go. Come on. <laughs> we want to see y'all. We want to see you. We want to see you. No, that's for real. All right. So where can the people find more about you guys, and where can we find more information about Sunday service? Well, um, just follow me, Jason White Cole. It's my IG. Uh, and then, of course, Sunday Service Collective, that's on IG uh, as well. And so that's where you'll find out more about the flip. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to be amazing. The music, the set designs, you don't want to miss the art gallery. The art gallery is just out of this world. And so you want to be at it. April 9th, the link comes out very, very, very soon, this week sometime. And uh, you got to get your tickets, got to get in. You have to be there. All right, Sunday service. We appreciate having yeah. you guys on the porch with us today. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. <laughs> Any last words and shout outs? Well, another thing that's happening uh, in, the, in the weeks very soon, May 14th, which is Mother's Day, uh, Strength of a Woman, Miss Mary J. Blige is having just a wonderful weekend here in the A. And so her, her gospel brunch is that Sunday morning. And uh, guess who's doing the music? Y'all know who's doing the music? The Sunday, Sunday Service Collective. Collective. So you don't want to miss that May 14th. We'll all be here. And uh, of course, uh, you don't want to miss the flip on the 9th as well as the 23rd. And then, of course, May 14th. Ah, strength of a woman, Mary J. Blige. And so it's just great to be a part of that and to be doing it here in this great city. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, for, for the, for the love that Atlanta has shown us just, just being here you know, week after week, and so we're just glad to be here, and so um, it's just it's just a joy. Appreciate you guys on the porch with us today again uh, one more time. Thank you for your time, you guys. Glad to thank be here. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Put your hands up. Let's go. Father.